start on this. Training is 100%, of course, yeah. and, and, but diet is the other 100%. There's no 20% or 50%, one 50%, the other. Steroids are just a finishing touch for whoa, the bodybuilder, whoa. and the thing is, more is not better. So that's the that's the thing on steroids. It's not the steroids that make a champion, but it's the hard training, the dedication, the diet, and the sacrifice, and the genetics that that person has what makes that champion. So you, yeah, because you've had so much therapy because that's how that real dealt thing, that's fucking, that's lean. You thought that one single event, that one single moment was enough for him to stand amongst the great to make his dream become a reality. Well, you thought wrong. In fact, it's far from over. That was the easy part. Now, now it's time to redefine the grind. Well, you thought it was over. Well, let's just get started. See, this is the part. This is the part where life demands you make a lifelong commitment. This is the part where life demands that you make a vow, come hell or high order that you're willing to pay the price. The full fare where you earn your spot with effort, with sweat, with blood, with tears. So you say you want it as bad as you want to breathe. 
then it's show time. It's examination time. It's time to get tested, to test your will, your endurance. It's time to test your heart, to test your limits. This is the part where you reinvent yourself. Everybody wants to achieve great goals and be, they want to be happy, healthy, thin, rich, attractive to members of the opposite sex, financially independent. Is that true? Well, we all want the same things. But what happens is people decide, I want these things, and before, but before they start, they decide to take a vacation, and they go to a wonderful place called Sunday Isle. And on Sunday Isle, they say, well, someday I'll lose some weight, and someday I'll take that course, and someday I'll finish it, and someday I'll send out a letter, someday I'll uh, save some money, and someday I'll get out of debt. And there may be people in this room who've been on that particular island. And who are they surrounded with on this wonderful fantasy land, this fantasy island? Who are they surrounded with? Other people on, on, who are on Sunday Isle. And what they do is, all these people do day in and day out is think of excuses. Then think of reasons why not to get started. Why not to get started? And this is what we have found, is that successful people take action and unsuccessful people take vacations on the island. So I'm going to give you the first secret of success today, is vote yourself off the island. For life, no more Sunday Isle. If you get an idea today, tomorrow, yesterday, if you get an idea here, take action on it now, move now, move quickly because 95% of your, your, your success or failure in life is determined by your habits. And anything that you do repeatedly over and over again becomes a new habit. So therefore, if you develop the habit of moving quickly, you become a totally different human being than people who develop the habit of going to the island before they take any action. Every time that we need to begin to stop and think and assess ourselves, that time is now. You know, we want to all become successful, but I've found that there's some success that's toxic success. What I mean is that you don't want to end up going after goals and dreams and neglect yourself. I want you to think about your goals and dreams and things that you want to achieve. And at the top of the list, I want you to put up there your strategy for being here. You just came from the doctor. Let me share something with you. I don't care what goals and dreams that you have. You've got to have your health in order to be here. So at the top of my list, and I'm suggesting you put it at the top of your list, your strategy, your game plan for being here. What are you going to do to take better care of yourself? That's one of the first things I want to ask you about. except yourself and after what you've gone through if you haven't done that by now it ain't gonna never happen
This is the Ronnie Coleman right here. imagination is something that we're not taking as, as seriously as we should be. I think your mind doesn't just control things in a sense that you bring things out of the ether, you bring things out of your imagination and bring them and manifest them in the real world, but I think your mind actually has an effect on how things go in the real world. If you believe in things, if you believe in things, they have incredible power over you, both good and bad, you know, and who's to say that's not real? successful life and uh, I chose to rise above it and move on.
very, very hard. It's, um, I've got all these guest appearances to do now, these shows I have to be ready for. I have to be always, you know, have a smile on my face, train, diet. It's a 24-hour-plus job. It's incredible. It's a lot harder than I thought, but I love being a pro. You need a hero in bodybuilding. You know, it's just like the Marvel comics. You had your superheroes. You know, you had Batman, you had Superman, you had Spider-Man. And when you relate to someone, when you relate, relate to a physique or personality, that's how you adapt to your hero. do all that, put my body through all that, is because I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Everybody want to be a bodybuilder. That was super heavy. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. 2,000 pounds. Because I love it. To train harder. Your day will come early. Someday you'll have a back Louis nobody else seen. Well, you gotta eat big to get big. And if you don't eat a fair amount of good food, you're not gonna get big. The will that you need to go to the gym every day. The will that makes you go into the four strips. The will that makes you go beyond and you do your 500 pound reps in the squats and you can't do another rep and your body is shaking. It's the will that makes you go one more time down and struggle up one more time. I think you guys want to see something.
aspect that motivates you, that makes the difference between you being in the gym full of joy and looking forward to doing that extra rep and looking forward to doing those extra hundred reps in the sit-ups and working past the pain barriers. That all is the mind. That's not the body. Command you to grow. You must grow. I'm the boss, motherfucker. I tell you what to do, you don't tell me. I told your ass to grow. Grow! What did Junior Miles say? Junior Miles said, everybody shut the fuck up. Uh, there's some growing going on over here. Uh, grow, motherfucker. Uh, grow, motherfucker. Uh, I command you to grow. Today, we're gonna train arms. You say it's impossible to get 22 arms, 22 inch arms, without taking steroids? Well, I'm gonna tell you how I did it, and it ain't no motherfucking secret. The first year and a half that I trained in the gym, every time I stepped in the motherfucking gym, I worked arms, because I was determined to get some big ass motherfucking arms. Somebody's gonna tell you that that ain't the way you do it, and it's not it don't work that way, you be overtraining. Fuck, I already told you, fuck you overtraining motherfuckers. For a year and a half, every time I stepped in the gym door, I worked motherfucking arms, because it was my magnificent obsession to have big motherfucking arms. It was my desire, my midnight dream, motherfucker, to have big ass arms. My dream was to stroll down Compton Boulevard in the city, and be the biggest motherfucker on the boulevard. They had a motherfucking 22. What you got, motherfucker? You hold a motor twos, motherfucker. Now, in order, if you want that, if you want to be, you must become obsessed with obtaining what you are trying to get. You have to be obsessed with it. If you don't have the mental capacity to be that obsessed about what you're trying to get, then motherfucker, you won't never have it. You will not get it. You must be obsessed. It ain't no secret. You just don't have the motherfucking heart and the determination and the will and the desire to put into this shit in order to obtain what you want. You're too big of a motherfucking pacifier sucking pussy to do this shit. You want the easy way. This shit ain't easy. For a motherfucking year and a half, I train fucking arms every goddamn day. On fucking Christmas, New Year's, my motherfucking birthday, anniversary, every fucking thing I was in the gym banging on. So that's how I did it, motherfucker. I worked my motherfucking ass off. I know you don't want to hear that. And I don't, personally, I don't give a fuck what you don't want to hear. Turn the channel off, motherfucker. Now, we're going to work on. I ain't what I used to be, but goddammit, I'm still C.T. Fletcher. And don't you fucking forget that shit. Get that shit, Mulo. even look like you want to put it down. Get that shit. Get it. Switch up. This shit don't come easy. It was easy. All these motherfuckers in YouTube land would be doing. But they ain't. They ain't got time to sit there and talk shit. They ain't got time to actually put no work in. All they want to do is sit there and talk shit about what you ain't doing.
little shit right there to warm up with. You gotta talk to your bicep. Tell that motherfucker you're gonna grow whether you wanna grow or not. Come on, Bulldog, quit playing. Get serious. Get that peak, Justin. Get that peak. Turn that wrist. Get that peak. Where the point on that motherfucker? Make it look like my balls. <laughs> this ain't shit. I ain't even got to look at this shit. I ain't even got to look at this shit. This shit is fucking pissing me off. It's so motherfucking easy. It's easy, goddammit. Easy. I ain't even got to look at this bullshit. It's upset me how motherfucking easy this shit is. Uh, woo! Lightweight. I'm going to beat you over your motherfucking head until you swell up and grow, goddammit. The legend of Bulo. Legendary Bulo. From parts unknown. My career is so much different from everyone else's. It's a job. So I just look at every day as a challenge with everything in general. in the early shots of that that was going to be a Mr. Olympia.
know it would be very unfortunate after training for the Olympia time and time again and come up second, third, or fourth. I'm glad I'm not one of those other guys. Dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who? If I would have listened to the naysayers, I would still be in the Austrian Alps yodeling. I would never have come to America. I always listened to myself and said, yes, you can. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. Work your butt off. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. No pain, no gain. When you're out there partying, horsing around, someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. Just remember that. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in the pocket. For anybody that don't believe in God, you gotta give him a try. You gotta, you gotta try him out. Yeah, buddy! Wait, wait! Yep! Yeah. Yep! And hey, I got mad love for every single fan out there. And I don't care if you don't like me. I still love you. Because you're here. You paid your money still. I love y'all. Uh, let's go eat.
whites, which is the AKK whites, and about a couple of oats. Number three, 10 ounce chicken with 10 ounce sweet potato. This is the meal number four, 10 ounce chicken with one cup of rice. And this is my last one, you know, and I have my dates here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, my body parts train like today. Training is 100%, of course, but diet is the other 100%. There's no 20% or 50%, one 50% the other. It's not the steroids that make a champion, but it's the hard training, the dedication, the dieting, the sacrifice, and the genetics that that person has what makes that champion. It's only gonna bring you down tonight. <laughs> I learned from dieting was me reading books. I try to get as many books as I can on dieting. We're always, we're always um, doing something to be on that stage. Everything, every minute, every hour has some purpose. When I'm lost, I come to you. So blue, I'm feeling you. When I'm lost, I come to you. I'm blue, I feel you. And you know it's over. When you gonna break down. Take everything and live for the moment It's only gonna bring you people to remember the dream and remember that it's not something that's dead and we shouldn't forget how to do that you know reality is I eat pounds and pounds of meat a day this that's the fact 10 pounds of fish 10 pounds of chicken and a couple turkeys
Let's fucking hit the gym. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. I don't think he lives out of the mirror. sport I've ever tried in my entire life and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Bill for the rest of the day. So pretty much just gonna be dying, eating nothing but fish, freaking tilapia, broccoli, spinach, handful of almonds here and there. And yeah, my life sucks right now. But uh, I'll tell you what, it ain't gonna suck in four weeks when I'm stepping on the Olympia stage. There's nothing that I've wanted in my life more than this experience, this opportunity. I've never wanted to do anything else. I've never prayed for any other kind of success. We all have a passion for it, and we all just love seeing our own bodies evolve into something, you know, what I say is very uh, artistic, and our own personal masterpiece. And that's what bodybuilding really is. This is my second home, basically. You know, it's like my church. I was crying on stage, I've been crying off stage. Uh, I don't wanna I don't wanna cry again. Oh, the whole journey, the whole process of starting uh, the lifting all the way to you know, coming to where I am. That's how you fucking get it done. Dream for this thing, this goal.
pushing their bodies to the absolute limits. These guys, they want to win, you know? They push themselves to win no matter what. When you see people who don't have much and then they become something, that is amazing. With that intensity and drive, with determination and iron focus, you can get nowhere. Everybody has a dream and has a, you know, wish to, to be a history that happened today. If I don't win, I'll die. Yeah, come on! That's why you're pro right there, see? That's why you're pro. Because people can't do what you're doing right now. Oh, that's why you're pro. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. He said, well, you can't do it. You're going to die. I said, well, I'd rather die doing what I love to do than sitting at home looking at TV. I'm C.T. Fletcher, six-time world champion. Three-time world champion, drug-free, bench presser. Three-time world strict girl champion. I'll say this, my childhood growing up, I'm a contrast because uh, if you look at the video, you see that I use quite a bit of profanity and it's really a contrast to how I was raised. There was a time in my youth when I thought that any amount of weight that I put on a bar, if I went down with it, it was coming back up. I felt there was nothing I couldn't do. I felt like a real fucking Superman walking around on planet Earth. What do I do to the party? <laughs> I like to do pause rips sometimes and think about the things that have gone on in my mind throughout the day and how anxious I am to get to the gym and just work out. I was raised super religious by a super strict Pentecostal preacher who uh, in his spare time used to beat the fuck out of me. school life, I grew up in Compton, uh, number one crime rate at the time, and we were proud of it. And uh, so I got into some things that, uh, everything that a preacher's kid shouldn't do, I did. I'm sure that everybody probably know Tookie Williams, which is a gangster from Compton, and one of the founders of the original Crips. When I was a kid growing up, Tookie Williams was the man, not Arnold Schwarzenegger. And also uh, Craig Munson, another guy you never heard of, the largest guy I ever seen in my entire life, including Sergio Oliva and all the bodybuilders that included. Craig Munson, a prison guy, was one of the biggest guys I ever seen. My mother is probably the biggest influence. Uh, she kept me from being insane as a kid. As I told you, my dad used to be, whoop my ass for sport. Uh, he'd come home and he, he felt like, you know, whooping somebody's ass that day. <laughs> there I was, but my mom was my biggest influence. Uh, bench press, my maximum lift, uh, good lift, 705 pounds. It was done in the gym, so it didn't count. In competition, 650 pounds. I done 725 on the bench uh, in the gym, which doesn't count, but it was with boards, so it also didn't count. 
The most I ever squatted was 725. So I could bench press as much as I could squat. 725 was, is not really a good squat for a guy that weighs, you know, uh, in excess of 300 pounds. Shane Hammond had the world record when I was around. He did 1,000. Uh, back when I was in my competitive powerlifting days, nutrition was a joke to me. Uh, I would eat any and everything, a non-stop eating machine, because I felt like that's what I had to do in order to be the biggest, baddest motherfucker on planet Earth. I wanted to stop traffic. I wanted to crack the sidewalk with every step. I wanted to be the king of the jungle, the baddest beast on the planet. So I felt like stuff in my face was the only way to do it. And I was such a regular at McDonald's back then. They, they knew what I was going to eat for lunch every day. They prepared my four Big Macs, four fries, uh, two shakes, and four apple pies. I had that same lunch for over 20 years at the same McDonald's, actually. I had no problem saying I'm number one or I'm the best. I actually went to a world championship competition. I, I announced to the entire crowd of super heavyweights who was back there warming up, which one of you motherfuckers is coming in second? Because all you motherfuckers know that I'm winning this shit. Now that was my attitude in 1992 when I thought I was the best on the planet. And what happened and all the way took the year 2005 for my attitude to change and be humbled was the fact that I had to have op emergency open heart surgery. Yeah, I was rushed to the emergency room more times than I care to remember. I hate the emergency room. <laughs> they told me they advised me not to even do it because the strain of having that much weight on might cause the or aortic valve to break at that time. And it, if it breaks, then you're dead. There's no coming back from that. And uh, I went anyway. Well, I had stopped powerlifting and I had lost, you know, I, I was 260 before the operation, so I had lost 45, 50 pounds just to try to not have to have the operation, but it didn't work. And I came out of that surgery weighing 190 pounds. So, and looking like I never lift weights before in my life. I was a human skeleton. Well, I, I have a pretty good idea. It might have something to do with the six, seven cheeseburgers I ate every day for 20 some years. I would eat those cheeseburgers uh, because I thought I needed it in order to keep up my size uh, instead of uh, taking uh, steroids, I would eat. So I would overeat and I would eat anything. It took me almost two years to recover. Powerlifting, I still want to go back and defend the unbroken 225-pound uh, strip curl record. I'd like to do it at the age of 54, uh, be able to do what I did uh, at the age of 30. I think that'd be pretty cool to come back 24 years later and do the same thing at a much lighter body weight and 24 years older. So I want everything I've learned over all these years of competition to get out there. I've been training with CT for at least three years and it's the best training ever. Can't get nothing better than that. It's hardcore, you go push you to the max. One day I was training with CT, I was about to pass out. He told me it was pass out and it was still my set. My name is Samson Fletcher, CT Fletcher's son. My dad is my hero and I want to be just like him. And I want, to, I want him to pass the torch to me. I started training with CT about two years ago from now. Uh, when I first started, I was really lightweight. I was about from 140 to 150. In one year, I went from 140 to 150 to about 195, close to 200 pounds. That was about in 2012, in the beginning of 2012. And from 2012 to 2013, now I'm about 185, solid muscle. All natural. 20 minute abs, 20 minute pad, 20 minute butt, 20 minute any fucking thing is a pile of bullshit. If you see somebody with great abs, a great butt, a great whatever, they didn't do the shit in 20 minutes. And if they tell you they did, they are a fucking liar. Trust me on that. No matter what, because I hate complainers, I hate criers. If I can come in here 
with a metal valve implanted in my chest, taking 10 different medicines just to stay alive every day and do my workout. You have no excuses. So no matter what, your nose bleeds, it's that time of the month, the kids are crying, you don't feel like it, your back hurts, you got aches and pains, it's still your motherfucking set. Let's get it done. Training now. Oh, 16 years. Oh, I'm too busy to cook. I can't eat right because I'm too busy. That's BS. Four hours a day, seven days a week.
and that's what keeps me going. You can't be paralyzed by fear or failure, or you will never push yourself. You keep pushing because you believe in yourself and in your vision. And you know that it is the right thing to do, and success will come. So don't be afraid to fail. We Never listen that you can't. fun in life of course but when you're out there partying horsing around someone out there at the same time is working hard someone is getting smarter and someone is winning just remember that I God, I, I want to do this. When, when it becomes something that you would be willing to do for free, when it becomes something that you think about it when you wake up in the morning, and it's on your mind when you go to sleep at night, it keeps you up, and it makes you excited. You, when you're doing something else, you just want to go back to doing it. But I see athletes like that when they're training. I came over here 
with empty pockets but full of dreams, full of desires. I want to be the bodybuilding champion of the world. And I get training and training hours every day. Anything and everything can be done if you can visualize it and if you believe in yourself. Trust yourself. Get out there and work like hell. Something that I, you know, I started doing back when I was, you know, probably 15 years old when I started lifting weights, and it's something hopefully I'll be doing until the day I die. Until the day I die. Bodybuilding, more than anything, is a is a mind game. Is what you bring to the table mentally. You could have you could have somebody with fantastic genetics, uh, somebody with all the all the tools. You can keep it together mentally, you know, day to day, workout to workout, and especially as the show draws in, I mean, that's when guys start to lose it. To get where Arnold got in life, you have to be willing to step on a few fingers and step on a few friends and fuck a few people over. You don't get to that level without that. In this world, you're either the Barracuda or you're that little minnow swimming around like this. And Arnold's the Barracuda. I remember waking my wife up in the middle of the night saying, I can't believe I'm Mr. Olympia. That was the most amazing feeling ever. I mean, you worked your whole life for it. I was 33 years old. Life is really always up to you. It's always up to you. Now, do you think those people that are out there working out five days a week, do they have more time than you do? Is their life less busy? It's just a must for them. They must work out that way, and they've made that turn in their life change. So if you want to make real progress, then you really got to look at your life in a different way. You got to say, I gotta take control of this process and not just hope it's gonna work out like people do who make a resolution. to what you do, your eating, your training, constantly reflecting on what you're doing will bring you so much further 
than anything else. that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your 
work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. In bodybuilding, you can't tiptoe your way through a workout. You can't fake eating six and seven meals a day. There's no way you can properly recover by training hard and then going out and partying all night. It's all or none. It's very much a lifestyle. It's a 24-7 occupation at the highest level. It was the first time that I worked hard, like really gave my all towards something because I didn't want to squander the opportunity that I had. I've been actually competing for almost 18 years now, and I started when I was 18. And one of the things that I learned over the years is, number one, you have to enjoy training. Is there anything in bodybuilding that you consider cheating? No, I mean, everyone's looking for that edge. You know, there are steroids involved in the sport, okay, in bodybuilding, obviously. And that's the problem with our sport, and that's why it hasn't got accepted by a lot of society, because they look at the bodybuilding and they say, oh, steroids. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand what actually goes into the sport, okay? You do what you do to be the best at what you do. You do what you do to win. If you want to call that cheating, fine, but I have the edge. Bodybuilding is, is made up of three stages. One is a competitive sport. Two is lifestyle. And three is an art. Don't look for an easy way out. Nobody wants to work hard these days. Everybody wants the easy way. The 20 minute ad, the 10 minute this, 10 minute that. Fuck that. The gym is empty today. Nobody wants to work out. fun doing it and you don't really love it, you're going to fail. So you got to love it, you got to have passion. And boy, wow.
Wow, look at that. Damn. The important thing is that you always challenge yourself, you know, and I have a strong belief in the philosophy of staying hungry. Whenever I have achieved the goal, then immediately after that, I ask myself what other challenge can I put up? I, want, I just want to be the best bodybuilder there is. I want to be Mr. Olympia. Stay disciplined and, and always dream and pursue your dreams. Come to the gym, work your ass off, earn it. job he was able to enjoy the process yes granted when I look back we can do things better the last week and drying out the night of champions back in 1990-91 so no Dorian wasn't my motivating factor uh, getting ready for this contest and having to go two three four six hours before eating it. help me if you can it's just this It's not the way I'm wired So could you please Help me understand why You're giving in to all days Reckless dark desires You're lying to yourself again Suicidal in the soul I'm coming on the front line Reach your Wheaties Stay focused and stay hungry in the gym I want to be that guy. Keep going. Come on. Come on, man. tired of me, you got to shake those hands, you've got to take pictures with people. These people paid a lot of money to fly out, especially in the recession. Come on, man. They spent, they spent money in the recession and the cult sports to come out to meet guys like me. That's love, man. Life is scary. 
get used to it. There are no magical fixes. It's all up to you. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams, that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. What emotions were coming to, to, to the front? Uh, this is the whole, the whole journey, the whole process of starting the lifting all the way to, you know, coming to where I am. It's just, it's been, been a long road. You got a, it's, just, it's just getting started. You got a super bright future, Jason. I got to tell you. Motivation is the stuff that keeps you going every single day. The motivation is on a daily basis. What are you going to do in order to follow through on that spark? So you've lit the match, now what? It's that daily motivation of waking up every morning saying, I want to do it. I want to be the best that I can be because I want to achieve the things that inspire me and make me feel great. It's the mind that really creates the body. It's the mind that makes you really work out the four or five hours a day. It is the mind that visualizes what the body ought to look like as the finished product. In the mind of every artist, you know, there's a, there's a masterpiece. Do you remember your first contest? Um, yes, sir. The first competition I ever done. Yeah, I was about four, about 14 or so. And it was the first time in my life that I ever experienced um, a success that had nothing to do with uh, my pedigree, you know, where I came from, um, had more and all to do with just my own ability to work really hard and if I work hard at it you know um, I could I could achieve something that was in my own hands to do people say you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing and the reason is is because it's so hard that if you don't any rational person would give up you know really start to realize that winning shows and making money and Whatever being fame, you know, fame and stuff like that is, is not as important as you know what some people think it is. You know, uh, you know everything as a whole because it's not just getting on stage and competing as a bodybuilder. It's about feeling good about yourself, getting workouts in, eating on a nutritional pattern that that's going to help you feel good because you know a lot of people are missing that in their lives.
pretty much I have meals one through ten. I don't have breakfast, lunch, dinner, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Twelve hours, the show is done. Back in the gym, no time to waste.
just two types of people. Those who say, I can't. And those who say, I can. This is also about limits. Reaching them. Exploring them. Exceeding what you thought yours were. Or maybe, coming to the conclusion that there aren't any. No, no water today, though. Limits.
will never discover their greatness. Most people, ladies and gentlemen, go to their graves living a life of mediocrity. Living a life far below their potential. Oliver Wendell Holmes said most men and women go to their graves with their music still in them. Where I came from, I'm not supposed to even have made it. I'm not supposed to even be living. The way people um, portray me in the press, those guys, if they had the nerve, they'd be just like me. The superstars, in regards to the field, they want to be able to say, you know what I mean? The white man's kicking my ass, you know what I mean? But they don't got the guts, you know what I mean? The reason they don't got the guts is because their minds have been suppressed. In order for me to keep going, I just picture that. And that's been my dream since the day I walked into a gym and started working out, is to be an IFPB player. When I think about the idea of I might fight, that makes me feel young. I feel the reason that I feel excited. I feel determination. I feel a yielding power. I want to succeed. I don't know about him or anybody else. If, he's, if he has no um, kind of relationship with our law or anything, I feel nothing. You know what I mean? Him, gun, mafia, whoever, I don't feel nobody. To make my life, my son's life, my daughter's life, my wife's life, my best friend's life, in a TLR a better place. That's what it's all about, baby. So never quit, never give up. And remember, the bad times don't last forever. It's only if you give up and you quit, and you lose. And as long as you never lose, right? If it's up, you'll never lose. You're a winner. You're a winner till the end. And that's what we do here. We're here for one another. I've got five months to go. It's going to be a long, hard journey to the Mr. Olympia, but I've only just begun. I've got to keep the faith and make my dream. Time Mr. Olympia must have some pretty cool perks. What has being so successful in bodybuilding brought to your life? Being successful in bodybuilding has brought a lot of peace, joy, like one roller coaster ride because you know, a roller coaster for me is one of the most fun things you could be on. And 
And that's my favorite ride at all the amusement parks. So bodybuilding has been pretty much a hobby. So, you know, I just been having, the, I actually, it's the time of my life. Exhausted, I've depleted my resources. Uh, he was a man now who was, you know, preparing for the biggest bodybuilding show of his life, and he he didn't have any income coming in. You know, this was a man who was living on a limited budget, 
uh, you know, every green bean uh, was counted, accounted for and every dime he spent was, was, was budgeted because he didn't have the money. After the contest, he broke down and cried on my shoulder and he said, I'm glad that you had this Best Poser Award um, because I have $7 in my pocket and going home to New York, I wouldn't know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. This is my life, but this is also me living it. I think, you know, in the mind of every artist, you know, there's a, there's a masterpiece. Yeah, but I sleep on the floor, you know, in a very small, very small room, focused on making this thing happen. He is intense. He's very focused. You know, he has his goal set. He, he's very determined. Dream for this thing, this goal. I've never wanted to do anything else. I've never prayed for any other kind of success. And if I gotta die tonight, if I gotta die tonight, if this weight is going to kill me tonight, then so be it. He doesn't consider failure an option. Control. Always under control. Always under control. Doing exactly what I want to do. I found my passion. I've created my true calling in life. I'm living life on my terms. Does Kai Green believe he can win this to win the Kennedy Center? Absolutely. Kai Green! He's an unbelievable champion. Kai Green! Kai Green! Thank God for bodybuilding for Kai Green. Question is, can Ed Sandow be at your Your dreams are always going to be the most important to you than they will be to anybody else, you know. So keep dreaming, you know, keep believing, keep pressing forward. So, so all those warriors out there, be encouraged. Here he is as a man who grew up with no parents, went from foster home to foster home. You know, had to fend for himself in a, in a very, you know, difficult world. Had no parental guidance, had no parental leadership. Uh, really had no one advising him on, on how to be a man or, or a person in, in society, in regular society. And here he was now, one of the top bodybuilders in the world. They can crack jokes, they can sit back and analyze and, you know, criticize and make all the fun they want. But I'm living my life. I'm doing it. What are you? You want to see the people say, oh man, you don't take rest. Why you don't take rest? Let's take our time. I'm tired. I say, hey, why take a rest? We'll rest enough when we die.
about my mind. As a trainer, I'm eating everything because it's a balance, but this is something that takes a long time. Just like everybody else, uh, the dream is to compete on Olympia stage someday. In this lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. And after what you've gone through, if you haven't done that by now, it ain't gonna never happen. Attention, interest, decision, action. Attention. Do I have your attention? Interest. Are you interested? I know you are, because it's fuck or walk. You close or you hit the bricks. Decision. Have you made your decision for Christ? So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine are. So he had to die. And each man kills the thing he loves. By each let this be heard. Some do it with a flattering look. Some do it with a word. The coward does it with a kiss. The brave man with a sword. expect you to do get the fuck up off the couch get your ass in the gym and lift some weights and shut the fuck up fault finding motherfuckers punk bitches hip having motherfuckers don't you stop now god damn it you bet not fucking quit do this shit don't even think about quit Hit 
Yeah, I'm gonna go up, smash my motherfucking self in the ground. Fucking sick. So I look like a fucking black pancake. <laughs> Love this shit. <laughs> die with you forever. The question is, if you die today, what ideas, what dreams, what abilities, what talents, what gifts, die with you you know there's no one else to look to expect that they'll pull up the slack this is this is your game
because that's how you have to be. Mentally tough up here. If you guys mentally believe you can do it, your body will find a way physically to make it happen. If you are short up here, it doesn't matter what you do with these guys, it will never materialize into anything. No dream will ever become reality. Send a shout out to all you guys, be strong. Trust in yourself, baby, because, you know, people will let you down. I, I can speak, there is nothing that moves. There is no flexibility here, that is just... <laughs> Not only physically dominating, but mentally unstoppable. It all starts today. Come on, lightweight! There you go. Mean what you say, do what you say. Follow through for something for one time in your life. One time. This is my fucking time! Nobody ain't got to convince me of what I do. I do what I do because I do what I do because I'm built from something. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to get back up again, to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. But you know, it doesn't matter if anyone else knows and if anyone else believes in it, you know. And that you know that that principle of visualizing yourself as a star will work and you all you have to do now is go towards that vision. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. out there or have complaints or concerns about behind the neck presses. 
you think that uh, it's an exercise that's unnecessary, and uh, if you've read in some textbook somewhere that you can mess up your rotator cuff, they were doing behind the neck presses and pumping iron. They were doing behind the neck presses in my day. I did behind the neck presses when I bench pressed 705 pounds. So I have uh, uh, two words for you people to say behind neck presses are worthless. Fuck and you. tell you a little bit about all these millions of questions you're asking me you, you want to know you just got to know every fucking thing you write everything down you get concerned about, about what you do this what you do that you always want to figure out something well I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it and, and maybe you can, it'll satisfy your egghead motherfuckers out there to just have to be able to write things down and figure shit out okay how did you get started in the penitentiary style Okay, I'm gonna tell you one story. It's called Cousin Junior. I had a cousin named Junior, Junior Miles. This guy spent three quarters of his life in the penitentiary. Every time he come out, Junior would come over to the house looking like fucking Mr. Olympia, swole as fuck, bangs everywhere. And I'm a little kid and I'm looking at this. But the, I'm gonna tell you one story about Junior, then no more about Junior. This is what this event, that happened is what made me decide that I wanted to be, uh, use the penitentiary system. Junior was locked up, he was locked up as usual. His mother passed away. He got out for the funeral. They let him out for the funeral. Junior had handcuffs on his hands, shackles on his feet. He was shackled up, handcuffed up at the funeral. He had an armed guard there with a shotgun just in case something went wrong. After the funeral, everybody's laughing and joking. You know how they do when you go to somebody's house and everybody's drinking, eating coffee. And Junior stood up. For some reason, something pissed him off. He didn't like everybody being jovial and happy because his mom had just passed away. Junior stood up. Here I am, about 10 years old. Junior stood up in the middle of all this commotion. And he said, and I'll never forget this, everybody. Shut the fuck up. Woo! Junior said, everybody, shut the fuck up. And you know what happened? You could have heard a fucking pin drop. It was silence. It was just like everybody stopped breathing all at once. It was like, <gasps> and the dude was handcuffed and shackled. Also had an armed guard there. But when Junior Spoke, everybody listened to what Junior had to say. Junior Miles, my cousin, was that bad. He was that yoke. He was that tough. Everybody, and I mean everybody, the fucking dog stopped barking. When he said shut the fuck up, everybody shut the fuck up. I looked up to that guy, and I wanted to be that kind of tough. 
I want to be like him. I want to be another Junior Miles. Junior Miles, <laughs> that motherfucker was my hero. He was my cousin and my hero. Everybody, shut the fuck up. That's how penitentiary. And he I told you about my experience. My I told you that I died three times on the operating table. I didn't tell you that afterwards, for 18 months, I had to sleep on the motherfucking ground with my back up against a wall. I couldn't put my own clothes on. My son had to spoon feed me. That's why I don't give you no motherfucking mercy. I don't give you the shit because I didn't get none. I came up hard, and I want you to be fucking hard. Fuck being a pussy. You've been a pussy long enough. My recovery was hard. I prayed to God. I told him, if this shit gonna be like this much longer, then just take me out. Don't let me, I don't wanna live like this. I can't live like this. Just let me die, because the shit is rough. But you know what? I didn't die. I kept living. A doctor came into me in the hospital. He said, I heard CT that you were three-time world champion. I said, yes, doctor, I am. And he said, well, he shook his head. A young doctor, he shook his head. And he said, man, what happened to you? I'll tell you what. I want to thank that motherfucking doctor for asking me what happened to me. He asked me what happened to me with disdain in his eyes. He couldn't believe that I had fell that fucking far because I looked like a fucking human skeleton. He just couldn't believe it. The CT, what happened to you? You don't look like you ever lifted weight in your whole motherfucking life. But that doctor is what made me determined to get back out there and to climb back up to the top of the motherfucking mountain and be king of the motherfucking beast once more. I, he, I thank you, doctor. You made me do this shit. Ask me what happened? Fuck you, motherfucker. I'm gonna show your ass what happened. I'm still, still, I'm an old motherfucker. 20 years later, but I'm motherfucking still CT Fletcher, and I'll be that until I motherfucking die. You always gonna have certain obstacles, you always have certain doubters, and people are always gonna try to steer you in a direction that you're not accustomed to, or they'll try to take you out of your game plan. Never let somebody chase you away from your goals. If there's anything in life that you put your mind to, you can accomplish, man. I hear it all the time. What are you doing? You know, you're coming to the gym, you gotta train, you gotta win.
all it takes is determination. You'll get your chance. Sometimes it doesn't come as quick as, as, uh, as you'd like, and there's a lot of hurdles, but you will get there.
that I'm ever doing it for any other reason than when I first started training. I don't ever want to say like, yeah, here I am, I'm training. I fucking hate this, but I got mouths to feed. That's... I don't know, I feel like you could do any other job. dream about being professional football or basketball players and you know others want to be doctors and lawyers and you know for me I wanted to be a bodybuilder I wanted to be the top guy in, in the sport that I thought was going to be my future
My mates were, were going rounds, getting up to no good, mugging people. You know, it'll just be me by myself with my gym bag, you know, going down to the gym basically. I, I got solitude in, in going to the gym, and for me, it was a way of focusing. There's so many people out there that are weak today that don't have discipline. There's more fat people than there's ever been right now. All these hamburgers and hot dogs and all this stuff is killing the kids. Sometimes I get so, I get excited. How can people go for this stuff? Build your body overnight. Join us, you know, be part of the We The Principles. Pump up your muscles and blast uh, your arms. It's not the steroids to make a champion, but it's the hard training, the dedication, the diet and the sacrifice and the genetics that that person has what makes that champion. I want to address you YouTube people who are saying that my language is too harsh, and that I talk too much, use too many bad words, and talk too harshly to you. I want to address you. First of all, let me say this. If you don't like what the fuck I'm saying, it's very easy to turn me the fuck off. I don't want you to listen to me. I don't want you to fucking look at my channel. Look somewhere else, motherfucker. I don't need your motherfucking ass to look at what the fuck I'm saying. I was raised in hardness. I was born into this bullshit. I have lived a life of hardness, and goddammit, I will die fucking hard. And if you can't take that, 
you motherfucking bitch ass motherfuckers. Fuck you. Turn the channel off and look somewhere the fuck else. You motherfucking pacifier sucking pussies. If you want to learn how to do some shit the hard way, if you not, if you tired of sitting on the couch and, and eating bonbons and motherfuckers, then you want to listen to me. If you don't, want, if you want to solve it easy for somebody to pat you on the back and tell you it's gonna be okay. Then you need you don't need me, motherfucker. You need somebody else. You need some other motherfucker to tell you how to get yo. Don't listen to me. Listen to somebody else. If you want the truth, if you want the shit that's gonna get you there, then listen. If you don't, motherfuck you. Get to work at it, accomplishing your own dream, fulfill your own goals. Um, there's something to be said for being a person that stands on the side of life 
watching other people live it versus being the person that's out there doing the damn thing. There's no secret to it. You know, if you want to be bigger, you want to be stronger. You know, the only thing holding you back is yourself. You sit back for one second and think, you know, I don't know, give me an extra spot on this. I don't know if I got it. You might as well go to fuck home. There's no way you're going to get it. Somebody has a bad shoulder, you work around it. Yeah. You, you, you don't have an arm, you work around it. Good. I had a motorcycle accident in 1999. Got hit by a truck and pretty much lost my arm uh, right there in the street. I went into a dark place in my life for many years. I was very angry about what happened. I spent about 10 years getting in trouble, drinking, doing everything I could to kill myself. It's a miracle right now that I'm sitting here not in jail or dead. <coughs> Good. Shoulder down. Nice. I'd heard about this guy from friends of mine up in Dallas. They said, oh, we've got this one-armed bodybuilder, and he's really awesome. Started working out just to get my mind, just needed something to do. Uh, a friend of mine started talking to me about competing and bodybuilding shows. And I saw him on stage, and I was just blown away because this guy showed up ready to compete. In 2011, I decided I was going to do my first bodybuilding show. And I got second place in my very first bodybuilding show in Dallas. I've done four shows in less than 11 months which is a lot for somebody just getting into bodybuilding. He's using what the hand that God dealt him and, and he's doing something special with it. How's that feel? This year, 
after all the all the attention and everything that I was getting from being a one-armed bodybuilder and, and looking the way I look, um, you know, I decided to do something good with all this and try to help others. So my wife and I decided to start a foundation. Foundation uh, is the Able Foundation, and it's it's not just uh, it's it's taking handicapped com competitors, not just in the sport of bodybuilding, but in in anything, and it's it's using their athletic abilities to give them a sense of of pride in who they are and what they do. I used to be all about living for myself and life is so much better now. I get so much more joy now doing things for other people than I ever did doing things for myself. But the most important thing I think is just the, I mean, literally now it's up to thousands of people that he inspires and, and he motivates through not just the foundation, but just himself. I think everything happens for a reason. Sometimes that reason is hard to find. You know, you gotta have faith and know that God's gonna bring you out. But I definitely think that the loss of my arm and the road that my life has taken now uh, is, the, is the best. Uh, it couldn't be any better. Good. How long you say you gonna do this shit, Big Rob? Ever. Shit. How many reps you gonna do? All of those shit. Come on, you light bread eating motherfucker. Let's go, goddammit. Pass that shit. Your set stops and you can't do no motherfucking more, Samson. Curl that shit. Pump that shit. Work out, goddammit. Work. 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 They said the greatest pair of legs in bodybuilding history, Tom Pass used to squat for hours on top of hours. He wasn't concerned about, oh, I, I, I can't do it. Overtraining. You overtraining motherfuckers make me sick. It ain't no motherfucking such thing as overtraining. It's a myth. It's made up by motherfuckers who want to sit on the couch, look at fucking TV, eat bonbons with house slippers on, and talk shit. Oh, I'm worried about overtraining. You worried about working. All you strict form looking for motherfuckers. Oh, he's not doing that right. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And fuck you. Do the shit right if I want to, motherfucker. If I don't do it right, it's because I don't want to. Now what the fuck you gonna do besides sit on the couch and talk shit? Your hip having ass. Oh, oof, butt, motherfucker.
Sydney bodybuilder has died after collapsing in a sauna in Thailand. Doctors say the 23-year-old had an undiagnosed heart condition, but some say a growing obsession with body image. If you make yourself more than just a man, if you devote yourself to an ideal, and if they can't stop you, then you become something else entirely. Yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, 